Ordinary Numbers by Cryptaria. Chapter 2. January 2012. Help Desk Call Center. This is Taylor, Operator 4191. This is not a secure line. How may I help you? There you are! Bond said, exasperated. He leaned back in the very comfortable leather executive chair, resisted the temptation to play with the levers, and said, I've been trying to find you for two bloody days. This is Bond, 007. Where the bloody hell have you been? I had two days off, Taylor said, sounding puzzled. Is there something I can help you with? This bloody USB drive doesn't work. I think it's because she's got a Mac. I need to get this program onto her computer, though. All right. Does anything happen when you plug it in? Nothing. No windows, no notifications, nothing. Band huffed in irritation. Does the drive have any lights that flicker when you plug it in? Green ones, but only for a few seconds. Then they go off. On the computer, do you see a row of colourful icons, including a two-tone blue square smiley face? Bond was relieved that he'd coaxed his target into handing over her login credentials. There's a silver icon that says Macintosh HD, some blue folders. Nothing else. Move your mouse to hover at the edge of each side of the screen until the row of icons pops up. And when it does, don't move your mouse away from it or it will disappear again. Hang on, I hear splashing. Bond said, swiveling the chair around. He glanced out at the sea, but saw no sign of his target. There was a strange reversal, being on his target's yacht, open and invited, while his target was out scuba diving. Usually that'd be his job, often involving magnetic mines to attach strategically to the hull. We're fine. Two bloody days I've had to wait. Be glad I like New Zealand. I've always wanted to go there. Sounds beautiful. And I'd have to visit some of the filming locations from Lord of the Rings, of course. Taylor coughed and cleared his throat. Anyway, did you find the dock? The pair of icons? Getting back on track, Bond moved the mouse to the edges of the screen and then froze. I just went dark. What the bloody hell? Taylor chuckled. Hot corners. Just move your mouse and keep looking. I suggest avoiding the corners of the screen from now on, though. With another annoyed little huff, Bond got the screen working again and searched the edges until he found what could only be the dock at the bottom of the screen where the taskbar was on a proper computer. I think I found it. Ah, there it is, he said, finding the smiling square. You sure there's not two blokes making out? If it is, they're incredibly happy about it, aren't they? Taylor said, and Bond suspected he was smiling. Are you on a laptop or desktop? Desktop, Bond said with a laugh. Nice no, would do. Expensive. Not that everything else isn't just as bloody expensive. It's a Mac. She probably had to nearly sell her soul for it. Is your mouse white with no left or right click or not? A money yacht that probably cost half a million quid. Money's not the issue. At least not until we get the names I need off this thing. The mouse is white. No buttons except a tiny grey one. Lovely. Hardcore Mac user. Taylor chuckled. All right. Towards the last section of the dock, you'll either see a stack of blue folders with an A on top or what looks like a brown address book. Wait, are you looking at a Mac right now? Bond asked. He didn't think they had any of them at MI6. Boothroyd had pitched a fit about changing over, last Bond had heard. Sadly, MI6 is a strictly PC environment, but I know Mac very well. I have a couple at home. Useful. Bond said, wondering just how good this Taylor's memory for computers was. Before Taylor, he'd never gotten anything but irritation from the help desk. Once you're hovering over the folder I described, hold down the control button on the keyboard and click. It wasn't intuitive, but Bond pressed control and clicked the blue A folder. Oh, that looks much more familiar. He said, relieved to see an array of programs as if this were a normal computer. Which do I want? Towards the bottom is a folder called Utilities. Hover over it to open the sub-menu and select Disk Utility. Right, got it. Bands then, feeling much more confident. This isn't the worst mission, but it's been bloody irritating. You'd think someone would have planned for this. There are very, very few jump drives that a Mac won't open. You just got unlucky. No one's shot at me yet, so it doesn't count. Right, so there's a big blank area, icons at the top, and a list at the left. Excellent. I suspect you'll see a 250 gig uh, GB Hitachi on top and a white. Yes. Are you really tier one? Not the supervisor, manager? Yes. Taylor glared his throat. Next will be a white, almost envelope looking icon, which probably has the word micro in it or something to that effect, and will be at least 50 GBs. Do you see it? Two. Barn asked skeptically. But there's the micro part. That's the one. Select the second one envelope. It will look like a subfolder. And click 
Convert in the icons list at the top. Select DMG from the image format list and put it on the desktop. Bond followed Taylor's instructions, idly wondering if he could get Taylor transferred to QBridge. He was too useful to be rotting away on the help desk with the other idiots. Of course, if he did that, he'd lose his essentially exclusive access to the boy, and he was all too useful. All right. Well, no. Close everything. You'll have a file on the desktop now that reads in .dmg. Double-click it, and it will mount a white envelope on the desktop. Well, we'll pretend that makes sense, and move along. Bond muttered Riley. But yes, there's a white envelope. Now, you're really doing this from memory. It's pretty right by the time you've done it a thousand times, Taylor said with a chuckle. Now double-click on the white envelope. Your program will be in it. Copy it wherever you like. Bond did as instructed, and then frowned. Four separate executables, a half a dozen of what he recalled were data files, and a batch file. Right, if this were a normal computer, I'd just use the batch file, but I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Oh, God, Taylor said in a deeply disappointed tone. Bam braced himself with bad news. I thought Q-Branch was supposed to be bloody geniuses. Engine Bomb, please tell me that the program you need to copy doesn't end in EXE. If I'm recalling this correctly, all four of them do. That's what the batch file's for, isn't it? We need to monitor her keystrokes, emails, ports, and that other thing. He said vaguely, You have to be kidding me! Idiots! Not you! He added reassuringly, None of those will work, 007. Can you give me time to find out if QBranch has Mac-compatible alternatives? Bond leaned back in his chair and thought about his target. Three inches shorter than him could hold her breath for six minutes while diving. She thought he was a professional gambler vacationing in New Zealand. I can find something to occupy my time, yes. Be cautious if you decide to spend that time in the ocean. Taylor chuckled. They have even deadlier creatures on the New Zealand. Tiny jellyfish that cause slow, excruciating death, so I've been told. Once again, I need to point out my own not inconsiderable qualifications. Do you... Never mind. He said, realizing only then that help desk techs probably had no idea what the double O program was actually about. Are you working at this time tomorrow? Or is this pointless? I could just take the bloody computer to the local station, though when she goes missing, someone might notice. I assure you, it will be exceptionally easy once I... Taylor paused. I may not have sufficient security clearance, actually. But I'll show you. I will speak with the key branch tech in charge of your op and instruct them on the... Oh, Christ, no. Bond interrupted. I've been avoiding dealing with him for two days waiting for you. He's a bloody cretin. I want to trust him with a flower pot. With a plastic flower. Why do you need to do this? Um, Taylor said, surprise obvious in his voice. I need a number you can get me now in a 30-minute time window during which absolutely no one will look at the computer. That's all? Easy. Bond said confidently. What number? Can you give me the 30 minutes now, or will I need to wait? Right now, if you like. We're moored, and there's no crew aboard. I can keep her occupied, assuming she even comes back up. For all I know, the jellyfish may have her. Taylor laughed, low and without the usual sarcastic edge his laughter seemed to hold. That would certainly make things easy. All right, in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, there is an apple. Click on it and select about this Mac. Done. Are you going to get in trouble? Ban asked. I can deal with your supervisor. Not fatally, but I can authorize damn near anything. I need to get a mission done. I'd rather make it look like the program's worked and avoid the hassle, actually. Don't worry about it, though I appreciate the concern. Now click on the button that says, More Info. Done. If you change your mind, let me know. I can always send in one of the jellyfish. He grinned, wondering if Taylor had liked the bloody snake. Bond was rather proud of that kill. He hadn't even needed his knife. I think I'd rather you sent the jellyfish to me, actually. In glass, obviously, so don't die. I'm rather fond of your deadly mementos, Agent Bond. You can drop me Agent, or just call me James. Oh, thank you, James. You can call me Mike. Taylor paused. On the left-hand side, you'll see a list, starting with hardware, followed by network. Expand the network list and look for a string of numbers labelled IP address. Found it. On all of them. Bond asked. Yes, please. Hold on, let me open a text editor. Okay, go ahead. Bond read all the numbers and let Taylor confirm them back to him. Then he remembered to ask, Can I take out the USB drive? I'd rather not forget it. Yes. Taylor paused again and Bond could hear the keys on his computer clacking rapidly. Telecom NZ. Oh, this is going to be easy. Half an hour, James. Perfect. I'll call you back when it's safe. Bond hesitated and then said, If I don't call you back, I need this. Let me give you a number. It's 
Alec Trevelyan. Barring the computer shutting down for no reason, that you needn't worry. I won't fail. And you'll be fine as long as you avoid the jellyfish. And sharks. Talk to you soon. Ban considered correcting his assumption that he shouldn't worry, but let it pass. Taylor had no idea that Ban's missions were uniformly hazardous, even life-threatening. No reason to upset him, though. Normally, the local station would handle that sort of thing if Ban were terminated, but they didn't know about information coming through this informal channel. He'd have to arrange a backup plan himself. Thanks, Mike. I'll call you back in an hour or so. He said instead and rang off. He retrieved the USB drive, pocketed it, and then undid everything he'd done. He probably should have asked Mike to talk him through the deletion just in case, but he'd keep his target distracted instead. He sent Alec a quick text, suggesting he get in touch with Mike Taylor, 4191, at the help desk if the mission went balls up. Then he went to go distract his target. February 2012. Pocket for you, Taylor. Taylor looked up a summer leave from the endless mire of help ticket notifications that was dragging his work email into a special hell. He felt like Rory from the IT crowd, ready to murder everyone who called in just to be told that they needed to turn it off and turn it back on again. The box, therefore, was very well timed. Taylor grinned at the address written down in black sharpie, causing Annie to raise an eyebrow at the unusual display of blatant emotion. She handed over the scissors without being asked. Should I get Audacity Reader to record your scream? She asked after muting her mic. I won't think I know what this is. The only question is, is it in glass or not? He got to open the tape, returned the scissors, and unfolded the box flaps. This time, he didn't hesitate to dig into the peanuts, scooping them out into the bin. But instead of finding an acrylic box with a jellyfish inside, he found a second cardboard box. It was flat and much too large to hold a book, unless it was a very thick coffee table book. The box had a stylish AM on the top. Curious, he lifted off the top and found dark blue fabric with a card, this time cream-colored cardstock. Jellyfish are too squishy to smuggle. Number 07. He set the card aside and unwrapped the fabric, revealing a wooden mask, intricately carved with blackened lines. Taylor held it up, admiring the intricate lines, even as his stomach fluttered. The snake he understood completely. It was part joke, part thank you present. But this was a gift without any edge of humor to soften it. Taylor wondered just what kind of mess-ups they had in Q-Branch that an agent would be grateful enough for simple competence to award it like this. Huh. Not a dead thing, he muttered. Bloody creepy, Annie said, looking over his shoulder. Then she said, no, not you, sir. Please hold. Into her headset and muted the call. Looks like you got yourself a stalker, Mike. You don't have a pet rabbit, do you? Rabbit, he asked absently, tracing the lines with his fingertips. She just sighed. Go Google fatal attraction when you get home. She went back to her desk and picked up the script where she'd left off. Taylor packed the mask into the box to keep it from getting damaged by any of the sugary drinks and food that dominated all help desk services. He tucked it next to his bag by his feet, thinking that mounting it in his flat just above the snake would make one hell of a statement indeed. Then he blinked to cut off that train of thought entirely. Would it do to start picturing an undoubtedly well-muscled agent being in his flat to admire the placement of his gifts, would it? His phone rang, and he sighed as he answered, just barely stopping himself from starting off by sharply asking, Did you turn it off and on again?